glance at the position for a second, you'll realize black should resign. White has the two bishops. White's going to play bishop takes queen. It's probably white's move. Right? Yeah. No. Oh, black. And, and black has the, white has the center. Okay, white's name is probably a little bit cooler. He's got everything. When they were seven years old, white was a better player. All right. This was played in the famous tournament, candidates tournament in 53, in what city? You can say it all together. I don't know. Correct. <laughs> that guy's correct. He said he didn't know. You, you at home know. It's one of the most famous chess books ever written. It has 1953 the title. There you go. Zurich 53. Black played Queen E8 because he's a good player. His queen was attacked and he moved it away. Okay, and white played E5. And actually, at this point, the arbiter thought the game was over, and they explained to the arbiter, this is chess, not tic-tac-toe. He was like, oh, because he thought that white had gotten tic-tac-toe. And then Pet Petrosian complained. He said, look, if this was tic-tac-toe, I could have won with this. Come on. <laughs> right. And the kids got that one. They never heard of, like, Zurich, the Danube, Petrosian, but tic-tac-toe. They're the world's leading authorities. Okay, so E5 was played. Now, white wants to continue with the attack, and Petrosian made one of his most famous moves, which I'm sure you all can find. No. I'll give you a hint. Oh, I have an idea. All right. You. Rook take e5. Yes, but that would be called sacrificing a rook. And, or, as Christian Carrillo would say, a rook. Rook. That's like a rook. That's better than a rook. Yeah. No, Rook is better. Yeah. And you know that guy, right? He's, he's your countryman. Yeah. Which one? Carrillo. Christian Carrillo. Oh, yeah, yeah, from, yeah, 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 yeah. If I pronounced it right, he would know who yeah, I'm Yeah, I'm proud of him. Oh, he's like, what? Yeah. Okay, so Black played A5. Ha -ha, I tricked you. Okay, Rook E3, Rook D8, Rook E1, and now Rook E6, the exchange sacrifice, confusing the audience. What? Okay, now, normally when I... Yes, he's confused. Normally when I talk about exchange sacrifices, which means sacrificing a rook for a minor piece, we're doing it with evil intentions. We want to take pawns, we want to mess up your pawn structure, we want to checkmate you, we want to have an active minor piece. Here we're doing it for defense, because that's what kids love. They want to play defensively the whole game. No. Yeah, that kid's already asleep. He's, they can't believe how boring it is. Okay, and here, since white has all of his pawns on dark squares, Black wants to blockade on the white squares so the pawns can never move. Otherwise, they would move. So rook to e6. This does two things. It blocks the e-pawn. Otherwise, white might have played e6. And it lets the black knight get into the game. This black knight, as we say in India, isn't doing Vishwa nothing. Look at this knight. Okay. And if I do want to move the knight, I probably don't want to go there. Rook e6. Now, again... I was explaining how the knight couldn't go anywhere. Now it has a very good square. E7. 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 Yeah, now the knight's looking good. Man, it looks good. Oh, e5. Can't. Wow. You, why can't you take your own rook and then play here? <laughs> and that's called the clearance sacrifice. So White was confused, sort of like all you kids are, but for different reasons. He was confused because he was so good, not for the obvious reason why you're confused. Okay. So White didn't take the rook. He's like, I'll do what I want. And he played A4 because he followed the Ben Feingold rule. They know at home because they watch my lectures. What A4 rule does it follow? Uh. Yeah, exactly. When your opponent's pawn is on B5, you play A4. Okay, I've said it in every lecture. Yeah. And then black played knight E7 anyway. Okay, and he could also have played B4. This was one of the notes. And now white plays D5 with a discovered attack and a fork. Hmm. And that's so many tactics that he didn't do it. That is Okay, he played knight e7. Wow, that's a good square for the knight, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Uh -huh. And Ryshevsky's like, whatever, and he took the exchange. Okay, and now, the reason white played a4, which is obvious now, I mean, it's obvious to me, but not them, is now we have this, you know, this bishop action going on. Otherwise, I don't like that bishop there behind all those pawns. And we see this very commonly, the pawn on a4, this pawn structure, the bishop on a3, and what opening? Anybody? Anything? If you could name an opening, that would help. They can't name opening. English? You with the wrong answer. Uh, the Sicilian. Correct, because that was the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> he did everything right. In the French Winoir, you often see this pawn structure for white, and white wants to play bishop a3, but his pawn's on a3. 
So he's going to play a4, then bishop a3. Okay, but even though white's up the exchange, white has a rook for a knight. A rook is better than a knight. If you're taking notes, I'll give you guys a chance. No, they're taking notes at home. Okay, well, these rooks are very suspicious. Ugh. And I gave a lecture last week, I think it was to the first class, and I explained... Like a rook's better than a knight, a queen's better than a pawn, and they were like, whoa, 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 slow down, a queen's better than what? And I was like, a pawn, and they are like, really? That's not what my teacher told me. Okay, and it's funny because Magnus Carlsen was their teacher, so it was weird. Okay, but anyway, um, what was I saying, Magnus, no good? No, that wasn't what I was saying. Um, so even though a rook is better than a knight usually, those rooks are very suspicious, they're not really doing anything. What are rooks like? Open lines. Open lines. Is this E-line open? No. What would the Germans say? Bad. They would, they would say, Ish don't think so. Okay, those are Germans that don't speak German very well. And the knight, conversely, that's looking pretty good. Right? Okay, that knight reminds me of me. You know why? No. Looks good. Okay, so white played queen F1, always retreat. I think maybe Rashevsky was from France. And the reason is, um, Black was threatening to get his exchange back, so he moved his queen to safety. Now he can get Ryshevsky's gun, which is tripling on a closed file. <laughs> Boo! No, it's obvious why you play queen f1, even to you kids, right? No. Because Black wants to fork the queen and rook, now he can't, and if Black does something with this pawn, then queen takes c4. That guy was pretty good. Okay. Knight d5, obviously. Rook f3. Bishop d3. So I like this knight. I like this bishop. The, the counterparts, eh, eh, eh. Okay, So a good exchange sack. He sacrifices back. This is an exchange sacrifice class. Everybody sacrifices in exchange. He can't even believe it. He's like, what? Isn't that bishop protected? The problem is, I don't see a future for this rook. Sort of like the kids in this class. So, like, wh where's this rook going? Yeah, I didn't think so. I can't go to any of these squares ever because I get my rook captured. So he's like, all right, I'll be up a pawn. He's up a pawn. He was right. Smart, right? So he sacrificed the exchange. He blocked the center. He got his knight in the center, and he won his exchange back because white was getting afraid. And black played b4. White should play c4 because it's explosive. But he said, oh, I'll take a pawn. Take That's a pawn. Good. I would play c4, although if black queen is b-pawn, then I would take it back. And it's funny, we had a game here yesterday at the, at the chess center in our tournament, and White played the Evans Gambit. Ovi's like, Evans Gambit. And then about 55 moves later, Black Queen does B-pawn. Man, the truth hurts. So White sacrificed a B-pawn on move four, and then Black Queen does B-pawn later. That's, that's the way life is. Okay, so he takes, takes with a pawn, he has a pass pawn anyway. Everybody has a pass pawn. And this is the kind of position where white's extra pawn is useless. Because we have the same pawns, okay? These are the same. Then we both have a pass pawn over here. Then white has this pawn. Ugh. Ugh. I mean, I'd rather not have that pawn. Then my bishop could go to d4. You know, we're talking, right? So that's sort of a useless extra pawn. If that pawn was here, or here, or here, okay, then I would like that, or here. Cheating a little bit. I would love, but that pawn here... No, that pawn doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay, everybody's playing with their past pawns on the queen side. Now they give some tricky variation. Too tricky for the kids. Rook takes a5. Sacrificing the exchange again. Did he do that? No. Why would he? Yeah, well, now he's done the exchange. Yeah. Oh, queen b1. That's annoying. Yeah, he can't even believe it. He's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> And then rook a7 check, and then h3, and white's going to win because white's got this action going on. Now the rook is much better than the knight because the black king no good. Rook on the seventh rank, recommended by me if you're taking notes. Okay, so Petrosian said one exchange sacrifice is enough, and he played queen c7 attacking the pawn, a6 obviously. And this was a draw because nobody can do anything. Boring. And they agreed to a draw, because both pawns are great, and if you take the pawn, the guy takes the other one. This extra pawn's never going to move ever. Nobody's ever going to do anything. What is the engine going to say? <coughs> Probably equal, yeah. Yeah, engine's pretty smart. 
Okay, and you'll notice something interesting, which I notice, but you guys don't. There's a good reason for that. You guys don't notice anything. That's the, the good reason. They agreed to a draw move 41. And the kids are like, so? You guys are adults. You know why they did that? No? You're adults. What? Time control. Yeah, time control is in move 40. Yeah. So they're like, all right, we have time another thing, draw. When they're blitzing in time trouble, they don't agree to draw, but all right, this is a draw. Yeah, the computer agreed. So that was one of Petrosian's famous exchange sacrifices. Ryshevsky had the two bishops. Ow. He had the past center pawns, and Ryshevsky, and Petrosian was like, yeah, whatever, I blocked that up. Okay, then White couldn't do anything, and this bishop never got good. 